Hello everyone, welcome to Moogle Speak. I'm Cindy and today we have got a little bit of new infos. It's been a couple of weeks since my last video and I was actually going to make a video last week because we had the Japan Expo 2012 in France and Yoshida was there and he answered some questions and signed uh, people's games and met over 200 fans so and he had such a great time and uh, so I was going to post a video then about the interviews then I got sucked into the secret world I've been playing a lot of that lately and it just kind of postponed my videos and uh, and it actually was turned out to be a good thing because now we've got a, a whole bunch of info to go through so there you go the first thing that I'm going to talk about is so let's just go in the order that it is. Is the teaser site is now open for the new Final Fantasy 14 for 2.0. So if you go to um, na.finalfantasy14.com or whatever your regional um, site is, you can see the brand new um, uh, of kind of I guess marketing a uh, site. For 2.0, it looks pretty much like a brand new game is coming out, which is what they're treating this as. It is a relaunch of the game right now, and everything that's on there right now is everything that we already seen for E3. So we got all the screenshots that were released, the artwork, the concept art, and we still don't have a video. So we're still waiting on that infamous video to come out so we can see what the trailer is like. But uh, I do like that in the screenshots you can see. The, the UI is getting a lot of improvement and all that so that's exciting alright what else uh, also we having skirmishes it's a brand new battle content to Final Fantasy 14 I'm still amazed that we're getting so many content updates before the beta even I think the beta is supposed to come out sometime in August or September October somewhere around there and um, and it was just at one point Final Fantasy 14 is actually going to close and we're all going to get funneled into the beta we're going to play that uh, until 2.0 launches again and I do believe that at the end of this month there's going to be patch 1.23 and that's when all hell is going to break loose so be sure that you are in game if you're currently playing I know right now like I said I've been in the secret world quite a bit but I'm gearing myself up so that I'm ready for that one point uh, <laughs> for the last patch in July so that uh, I see you know all the events that are going to happen in Final Fantasy 14 it's gonna be really exciting hopefully so pretty sure it is and uh, so skirmishes are happening around Limsa Lominsa I believe so what they're doing is unleashing these monsters on a couple of islands and it's designed for four to eight players, so for groups. And you go there and you have to defeat these monsters under 30 minutes. And you can get loot. That's right. So you can get these awesome weapons, the very um, purpley blue sort of. And they're kind of um, kind of like sea-like. So that's the impression I'm getting anyway. So that's pretty cool. I'm, I'm just, yeah. It's awesome that we're still getting battle content even though you know things are starting to wind down and stuff so you know keeping everybody busy um, oh I'll talk about this later I was gonna say about uh, how I was starting to talk about how often we're gonna get updates after 2.0 comes out because Yoshida did mention that well I'll just say it now we're supposed to be getting updates every two months so that's pretty that's pretty good and that's actually awesome for Square Enix they're not really known to be um, very fast when it comes to updates and all that especially content updates more quests and battles and so but um, that's what he promised so we'll see what happens but that's really really cool and so far I mean they seem to be doing a pretty good job right before 2.0 even so everything's looking really well now we've got letter from the producer 31 so as I said he went to the convention in France had a really good time even had to speak French in front of a whole bunch of people <laughs> and I said and he apparently you know yeah it's he I don't know if he speaks English that well even so I think it was quite the challenge for him to speak French to people so that I don't know I'm, I'm 
and my first language is French, so I thought that was really, really exciting and cool. And I wish I had seen it. So, and then they released concept art for the RSC armor, which is race-specific armor. And um, so far, I don't know, they, all they've shown us is the hero armor and the Mikotes. And I don't know, they look kind of pretty similar to me. There's just that Mikote female, for example, have a two-piece, you know, a top and a skirt, while the um, the hero lady has, you know, one piece with a corset and stuff. So there's a little different, but they are the same colors. They're themed pretty much the same. But uh, so I don't know what the difference is between that and and any other armor in the game. Aesthetically speaking, I imagine the difference is they're going to be race specific stats, just like Final Fantasy XI. So it's just alright, I guess. But the colors are the same. You know, the RSC I think in Final Fantasy XI had different colors. I know the my Mikote RSC, the first one I got was I had um, I was red. While the uh, the hero was blue, I think, and white or something like that. So I don't know, but it's it is interesting. Also, um, oh, this is from the forums. It's apparently going to be a wedding chapel in Gridania for the role players out there, for the in-game couples, so you're able to marry your characters. So that's really really cool. There's a whole bunch. I mean, 2.0 is going to blow us out of the water. <laughs> Blow us out of the water, I'm pretty sure. With all this this I, I feel like they've been promising too much. I don't know, but they've been working on this for a year, so you know, hopefully um it's gonna be everything that we hope it is. Alright, what else did he talk about? I pretty much mentioned everything. Um Okay, so schedule for 1.23, things are still a go. So that's basically it. It says he's off to China Joy 2012. I'll talk to you again in the next producer letter or on the forums. So he's going to another event, which is cool. All right, back on to the interview from Zero Online. There's a couple of very interesting things. I'm not going to mention everything that is in the article. If you're interested, you can go to ff14.jeuxonline.info. Uh, That's J-E-U-X online.info. And then um, I think that'll take you somewhere. Anyway, hold on. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. Per perfect. Perfect. And you can uh, just translate that to English because I'm, I have it in English right now. So don't be scared if everything's in French. It, you can get the English version too. <laughs> okay. So he said, um, oh yeah, the, the one thing that I found the most interesting about this whole interview was that Yoshi was saying that the uh, progression is going to be a lot different than what we have right now. So now everything is through guild leaves pretty much, especially if you're soloing or it's through attacking monsters but which is pretty much what the guild leaves are they're just you know attacking a bunch of monsters over and over and over and then you level and then you know and i think there's a good reason why it's really easy right now is because um they're just giving it to us now they're like okay here we go level but and they're not they didn't you know they brought down the the um the grind aspect a lot just so we can get like a whole bunch of stuff done and uh because What's going to happen in 2.0 is that progression is actually going to happen through quest, questing XP in, in the story and all that. So, which is a big step from what we have right now. So, we're going to more and more traditional, not traditional, but more mainstream type of MMO progression where you do it through the quests. Um, I don't know how involving the quests are going to be or if they're going to be all WoW like. Hopefully not. But, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, raises a lot of questions. Is it going to be a good thing? Is it going to be a bad thing? So I personally like the leaves. I know that they're not going anywhere. They're still going to be there for those of us who uh, want to level a little. But I think like the main progression it is going to be slower too. But it is all going to be through actually playing through the stories. So 
which is kind of what they had promised in the first place before the initial launch. So hopefully that's exactly what we're getting is what was promised at the beginning. That story would have um, actually a lot of more meaning to the world and to actual progression too. So um, let's see what else he says. Completing the quests, getting rewards, huge experience points, or completing a dungeon and getting experience points, that's going to be the key thing to level up your character, not like at the moment where you have to do monster camping or farming. That's not going to work in 2.0, so we'll see. Um, for the new players, once you make your character, then you start going to the storyline, experiencing the scenario and completing quests, you would not really progress in the game. You would gain experience points and level up your character first. Once you experience the storyline, you will realize that your character is leveling up at the same time. Okay. Uh, for the level 50 players that are already 50, of course they can try out the new main scenario of 2.0 and complete the battle against the Gar Garland Empire, or try out the new Crystal Tower content, so you can start trying out the end content if you want to, or of course you can try out the new scenario from scratch. There will be several options given to players, so it's not because you're level 50 that you'll be left out in the cold and won't be able to see the beginning of the new game, you will, so that's, that's really neat. And, or you can just start endgame or do whatever you want. Because you're level 50, babe. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, so stability of the search, blah, blah, blah. Free companies. Okay, so what's the deal with the free companies and the link shell? So he's saying the link shell is... Link shells are going to stay how they are now. They're basically social hubs for people. You can have multiple link shells of whatever flavor of group of people that you want that's still going to stay the same. However, free companies are more like traditional guilds from other games where you, and you only have to pick one. And those are going to be your main community. So um, right now I treat my link shells like they're free companies, but you will have the option of having many link shells and companies as well. So that's going to be cool. So it says you're basically, it's a guild. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So is it only for high level players? And he says, no, but you do, it, it looks like you have to reach a certain point to form a certain um, a free company, certain level in the game, or, certain, or to be a certain point in the game. And, but then once you've, you've had your free company set up, you can invite level one players if you want. And there's also going to be a mentoring system to help out the newbies and stuff within the free company, so that's awesome. Um, so, what else? That being said, even if you don't belong to any free company, it doesn't mean you can't enjoy the functionality. For example, uh, myself and Sandy have their own free company. We can still invite someone else as a guest, and we can help him complete on particular content. How awesome is that? So you don't have to be part of a free company if you don't want to, but if you have friends in a free company, they can invite you as a guest, and they can help you out anyway. So that's great. That's great to hear. Um, voiceovers. Are they going to be everywhere? No, he said that the voiceovers are only going to be kept for the main quest and main scenario. Because, um, and I've brought this up a few times, they want to have to update the quest a lot, the side quest. He feels like there should be a lot of content there and if you introduce a lot of voiceovers then that slows down that process. So he's going to keep the voiceovers for the really big important cinematic stuff and the rest is not going to be voiced and that's totally cool with me. I think that's how I wish Star Wars The Old Republic had actually done it now because their content uh, updates are way too slow because they insist on having absolutely everything voiced and that's just that's not cool <laughs> okay also becomes tiresome after a while I don't know like I, I didn't think I would actually get tired of hearing voice but I did get to that point <laughs> okay uh, you can choose whatever language you want PS3 is coming okay um are there gonna be changes towards the battle systems the battles are the, the gameplay, the combat gameplay is going to be a lot faster. So even though it has improved since launch a lot, it's going to be even, it's going to change even more. There's going to be combo routes. Uh, the combos are going to change, battle regiments and all that. So it's going to be really dynamic and really different from what it is. Or like, still, again, <laughs> like, basically they keep changing the combat so much. I don't even know 
uh, how to imagine how different it's going to be because to me the current combat system is already so much different than it was at launch so but it's nice that it's going to be faster and speedy so that's cool and exciting you know exciting gameplay although I do like the st strategic element I don't think they're ever going to change that so uh, okay whatever blah, blah, blah. relics I think that's pretty much it. The rest is just uh, stuff you can check out for yourself. Oh, the, is there going to be more mounts, unique armors, chocobos? Yes, of course. We've already covered that. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for your Mughal Speak for July. And um, next time, hopefully, we'll be recording the big bad events. I don't know how it's going to work out, but hopefully I'm going to have my Ben Cam open and I'm going to try to record as much as I can as I'm experiencing it. And then I'll, I'll put a little video for you guys. So it's going to be awesome. Alright, see you later. Bye.